Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain about heat treatment processes for the steels. So before the starting of the heat treatment process, there will be the general layout of the heat treatment process chart. So basically that will be related with the iron carbon diagram for the up to the 2% of the carbon is being present into the steels because heat treatment processes that will be applicable onto the steels. So we are only considering up to the uh, temperature range of the 1130 into the ion carbon diagrams and the weight percentage of the carbon that will be up to the 2 percentage because steel is nothing but it will be the up to 2 percentage of the carbon is being present with the iron. So you can say that it will be the hypoeutectoid steel eutectoid steel and hyper eutectoid steel. So if you want to learn in details for that hypo eutectoid steel, eutectoid steel or you can say 0.8 percentage carbon steel or you can say hyper eutectoid steel. So you will find a link in my description box. So just you can see it will be the similar to our iron carbon diagram. So above 723 it will be the formation of gamma austenite or you can say that will be the 100% solid phase of the steels at just above the 723 degree centigrade. So as for the iron carbon diagram, so this 910 to these lines that will be known as a EC3 temperature line or you can say upper critical temperature line. So after this austenite it will be converting into the alpha ferrite phase and according to the solubility of ferrite with the carbon at higher temperature so here that will be the point of 0.025 percentage of carbon so that will be having a hundred percent solubility to make a single solid phase so that will be known as a alpha ferrite and one more that will be the ACM temperature line so at this temperature line this gamma austenite it will be start to converting into the cementite phase so that will be around 1130 temperature line or you can say ACM temperature line and one more temperature line is there at around 723 degrees centigrade that will be the AC1 temperature line or you can say lower critical temperature line. So this all phases it will be before the 0.8 percentage of the carbon so that will be the formation of alpha ferrite plus perlite at 0.8 percentage of the carbon we know that it will be the 100% perlitic structure and after that up to the 2 percentage of carbon it will be the formation of perlite plus cementite. So this point it will be 0.8 percentage of the carbon and 723 degree centigrade so that will be known as a eutectoid point. So the transformation converting from this line or you can say transformation it will be passing through this line so that will be the eutectoid steel formation. So now if you are increasing the properties of the normal steels either it will be the hypo eutectoid steel either it will be the eutectoid steel or it will be the hyper eutectoid steel you will performing the different heat treatment processes then and then you will enhancing the mechanical properties of the steels. So in this video I would like to explaining about hardening process. So just you can see for hardening onto the steels in case of the hypoeutectoid steel which will be heated about 20 to 30 degree above AC3 or you can say upper critical temperature then it will be rapid cooling. So that will be with the help of water quench or you can say with the help of oil or you can say salt bath 20 to 30 degree then AC1 or you can say lower critical temperature range then it will be having a rapid cooling. So basically hardening process that will be deals with a rapid cooling by oil water or you can say salt bath. So this will be making a hard structure at your room temperature. So in case of hardening process it can be defined as quenching or you can say rapid cooling 
of steel from austenitic temperature the cooling rate to be such that it should be sufficient to form a martensite structure and that will be avoid the soft face productions without distortions of the working of the components so in that case of the hardening process there will be the no any chances to produce a pearlatic structure so hardening process that will be deals with the hardness it will be present into the structure so the hardening process always induce the brittleness into the components hence after the hardening tempery is to be done on to the steels so basically tempering process that will be only performing by the hardening process because into the hardening process some extra amount of hardness is being present into the components so by the help of the temperings it will be refinement so it will be having a enough good property as a hardness is being present for the materials so basically what happens into the hardening and followed by the tempering so that will be increasing the hardness of the steels increase the wear resistance of the steels improve the strength of the steels and also improve the toughness into the steels so in case of the hardening process where the austenite there will be no transforms into the pearlite structure or you can say ferratic structure or cementite structure but it will be only transforms into the martensite structure so hence the transformation from austenite to martensite so we will observe the carefully depends on to the some of the things and that will be first homogeneity of the austenite in case of the homogeneity of the austenite we can get the correctly calculating the austenitic temperature for the any steels so basically that will be depends upon the weight percentage of the carbon and holding at that temperature to get the homogeneous structure so what happens the this will be the proper hardness throughout the steels and no soft spots is being observed second important factor that will be for the hardening and it will be the proper quenching so by the help of the proper quenching onto the steels from the furnace into the quenching tank without delaying so that austenite when put into the oil or you can say water tank directly martensite transformation take place properly and the third important part that will be the compositions onto the steels so basically into the category of the steels up to the 0.8 percentage of the carbon that will be the hypoeutectoid steel so it will be followed by the upper critical temperature range and for the more than 0.8 percent to 2 percentage of the carbon so that will be the category of hyperuetectoid steel so that will be followed by the lower critical temperature range so heated about 20 to 30 degree then it will be the rapid quenching or you can say rapid cooling to form the martensite structure so in that case it will be the grain coarsing then decarburetion of the surface oxidations of the surface and formations of the retained austenite now we are discussing with the different quenching mediums as a water quenching oil quenching and water quenching after the tempering process so let's see the first one if we are using the water quenching process for the hardening followed by the water quenching process so that will be having a maximum hardness is being present so that carbon it will be in the form of the cementite which will be having a hard structure so just you can see so this carbon it will be into the hard flax so that will be having a maximum hardness is being present for the water quenching process if we are performing with the oil quenching process so that will be the medium kind of hardness is being present but it will be also making a martensite structure so just you can see for the water quenching so by this water quenching process so this flax or you can say dendrites of the carbon which will be in the form of the cementites it will be having a good hardness is being present but that will be as lower with respect to the water quenching process but if if you are performing the water quenching for the rapid cooling to form a martensite structure and if it will be the followed by the tempering process so into the tempering process that will be the rearrangement of this hard structure 
which will be present in form of the cementite so that will be having a refinement into the tempering process so just you can see this water queen structure now it will be converting into the uniform structure or you can say uniform hardness is being achieved by the tempering process so just you can see so just you can see this hard flex now it will be having a well distributions so which will be having a good mechanical property in the terms of the hardness as compared to these two methods but with the help of water quenching it will be having a maximum hardness is being present so for getting a uniform hardness by the water quenching so that will be followed by the tempering process so i hope you understand the hardening process so if you like this then subscribe and share more the mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching